Hello everyone, how are you today? I'm Dr. Parunjit and you're watching Dr. Education. Welcome back to my channel. And as you know, I make videos about health and healthcare topics and all my videos are directly referenced from internationally accepted US National Medical Library and therefore you can trust the information given in my videos. And today, I'm going to give you an overview of skin bacterial infections just like last time. I gave you an overview of fungal skin infections. Today we are going to talk about bacteria. And today we are going to talk about what are the causes, what are the types, what are the risk factors and preventive measures and including a little overview of the treatment of bacterial skin infections. So let's start. If you want to know about health and have health concerns, then subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. You'll be notified about all upcoming videos. Now guys, skin. Your skin provides a remarkably good barrier against bacterial infections. Do you know that many bacteria actually live on your skin? And many more actually come in contact with your skin on a daily basis but your skin provides a remarkably good barrier against these infections but still sometimes bacterial skin infections can occur and when they do and when they occur they can range in size from a tiny spot to the entire body surface. They can range in seriousness as well from harmless to life threatening. So what causes all these bacterial infections? What are the classifications? What, how, how are they classified? What are the causes? So because most of these infections involve skin and the tissue under the skin, they are formally classified as skin and soft tissue infections. And these are again divided into minor infections and major infections. So minor infections include impetigo and other minor skin abscesses like fruncal, carbuncle, all these things. Impetigo is basically a skin infection caused by a type of bacteria called Staphylococcus. Staphylococcus aureus or Staphylococcus pyogenes or both. They can lead to a formation of a scaly yellow crusted sore, sometimes small blister filled with yellow fluid. So this is Impetigo. Like ecthema is a form of impetigo that causes sores deeper in the skin. So impetigo which is most common in children is a type of superficial skin infection. Then talking about fruncal. Fruncals are like boils. These are tender, small and these are more superficial abscesses that are defined by involvement of the hair follicle and the surrounding tissues. So these are very common in various places like neck, breasts, face or buttocks, right? They are warm, painful, pus filled pockets of infections. And similar pockets are carbuncles. Carbuncles are multiple fruncles that are connected to one another below the skin surface. These are carbuncles. If not treated, this abscesses often come to the head and rupture, discharging a creamy white pink fluid. So, fruncal carbuncle, skin abscesses. And there is folliculitis also. Folliculitis is the infection of hair follicle, right? That is one more thing. And obviously in that case also pus will be filled in the hair follicle because of bacterial infections. So, folliculitis, fruncal, carbuncle, these are minor infections, superficial infections then you might have major skin infections which are basically now called as a acute bacterial skin and skin structure infections right a b s s s i and these include cellulitis right erysipelas and wound infections 
so and major skin infections also then what is cellulitis cellulitis is basically a spreading bacterial infection of the skin and the tissue immediately below the skin this can lead to red redness pain swelling tenderness over the area of the skin and some people can have fever chills and even some serious sepsis kind of a situation and you need a lot of antibiotics in this situation same goes for erysipelas Erysipelas is basically superficial form of cellulitis, which is typically caused by a typical type streptococcus, streptococci. It will again lead to shiny, painful red patches, and this lead to, and this will lead to shiny, painful red raised patches on the skin. So erysipelas, and obviously there can be wound infections. Wound infections. Whenever you have a cut, an abrasion, a wound. you might have bacteria invading the wound and getting the wound getting infected right then there can be major skin in abscesses abscess means collection of pus so if the abscess is larger than 75 cm square accompanied by swelling redness hardening and thickening of the skin it's a major abscess or else it's a minor abscess like frontal is also an abscess but minor abscess so abscesses so all these are basic classification of skin infections many type of bacteria can infect the skin and most commonly the staphylococcus and streptococcus are the culprits methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus also known as also known as mrsa this now is the most common pathogen causing skin infection in many countries this mrsa is resistant to many several antibiotics therefore doctors actually tailor their treatment based on how often mrsa is found in the local areas and whether or not it has been found to be resistant to commonly used antibiotics or not then there can be skin infections caused by less common bacteria which may develop in Uh, patients who are already hospitalized because of some other condition or who are living in a nursing home or while gardening in your own garden or while swimming in a pond or lake or ocean so you can have all so you can have bacterial skin infections from all these places yes you can have bacterial infections from hospitals because in hospitals there are other patients and there are attendants of your attendants other attendants who can bring the infections inside or from one patient it can be transmitted to another other patient that's why hospitals needs proper hygiene maintenance proper norms are maintained that's why there are accreditations to see if the doc, if the hospital is accredited and maintaining its hygienic conditions so what are the risk factors why you will have a bacterial infection obviously some people are at a particular higher risk of developing infections like diabetes right people who have uh, poor blood flow to a certain part of the body say hand or feet right obviously they will have high chances of having bacterial infection right so why diabetes causes bacterial infection because if you have high level of sugar in your blood it decreases the white blood cells ability to fight the infection then people who are older are obviously having higher risk of infection people who have immunodeficiencies hiv infections aids or other immunodeficiency disorders like hepatitis b hepatitis c can have easy bacterial infection then people who are undergoing chemotherapy or treatment with other drugs that suppress the immune system can have bacterial infections people who are taking naturally occurring steroids can have bacterial or fungal infections or even steroid therapy can have a side effect right then skin that is inflamed or burned or damaged by sunburns scratching or even by trauma is more likely to become infected in fact 
any break in the skin predisposes a person to infection because your skin already has a lot of bacteria and any break can make it easy for the bacteria to go in. That's why whenever there is a break, in, even if there is no infection, you have to still clean that area regularly with a antiseptic solution. Then how can you prevent? Preventing bacterial infections involve keeping the skin undamaged and clean. Whenever the skin is cut or scrapped, the injury should be washed with soap and water and covered with a sterile bandage. You don't have to apply antibiotic ointments on uninfected minor wounds because sometimes you might develop an allergy to the antibiotic. Just apply, just clean the area regularly with an antiseptic solution, that's it. Antibiotic, antiseptic are different. Antibiotic ointment are used if the infection actually develops, then they are used. And larger areas require antibiotics taken by mouth or given by injections. Abscesses or pus filled pockets should be cut open right, by a doctor, a surgeon and they need to be drained, pus needs to be drained right? and any dead tissue needs to be removed because dead tissue will lead to more infection. Right? So that's the basic overview of skin infections, skin bacterial infections. Hope you understood the points, hope you got something new, hope you learned something new from this and don't forget to share this video, let others know this is the most common type of skin problem, bacterial and fungal infections. So everyone needs to know about this. Make sure to share this video to everyone. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon because that's how you'll get the notification of our next video. Till next time, I'm Dr. Paranjit. You know I'm a consultant physician, cardiologist, in Yashoda Super Specialty Hospital, Nehru Nagar NCR. And you know I come online on Sundays in my FAQ channel. So meet me there. Till next time, stay connected, stay healthy. Thank you.